Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for Devotionables, Brief Devotions for Busy People. My name is Gabriel. Today we are uh, talking about Ezekiel 39. Ezekiel 39, um, you know, Ezekiel, man, writes with the, some great and magnificent descriptions of some things that just kind of our heads are like, what is going on? And uh, sometimes you get lost in the details, but Ezekiel 39 is pretty much pretty straightforward as far as um, some of the things we've read in the book. And what we need to take away from Ezekiel 39 is that God is sovereign. That he rules over all of his creation. He is in control. He writes the script. He is the author of history. And he's the one who has raised up nations, put them in the places where they are. And in this particular chapter, you know, he, he tells God he, he's raised them up. To bring judgment on Israel, now their time for judgment has come because they have sinned against the Lord and they have been wicked. And so we see that God is sovereign. Two, that God is judge. And that's in his sovereignty. He says, I'm going to judge Gog. He has judged Israel. Israel, his people, his special possession, you know, they had sinned against him. And they were judged. They, uh, you know, the, the judgment on the temple, his presence, I'm not with you anymore. Um, he leads them into exile uh, through other nations. And now the time for, is for God to be judged. There's a time for judgment for all of us. The author of Hebrews says, it is appointed once for a man to die and then the judgment. And there's a, a, a recurring pattern in the scriptures and we see here again in Ezekiel 39, that God says, I'm doing these things. I'm acting in history. I'm judging. In a moment, we'll see, I'm redeeming. So that you might know that I am the Lord. That you might know that I am God. That's what he tells. That's the same kind of language we, you might remember from Exodus. When he tells Pharaoh, so that you might know that I am the Lord. He tells the Egyptians, so that you might know that I am the Lord. He tells the nations he tells Israel that you might know that I am the Lord. And that's what's happening here in Ezekiel 39. I'm doing these things so that you might know that I'm the Lord. The Lord is at work in your life. And you should pray, help me see it, Lord. So that you might know that he is the true God. That he is the God over all the earth. who writes the history of the earth. And he's a good God. He's benevolent. He's wise. He's powerful. And so we're going to know that he is the Lord one way or the other. We're going to know that he is the Lord in judgment. We will know him as judge, as Gog is about to find out. Or we can know him as Savior, Redeemer. That exile and judgment does not have to be the final word. And it's not for those who repent of their sin and look to God in faith and place their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus has come and taken the curse upon himself. He was judged. Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. And so for Jesus then, for those who look, who look in faith to Jesus, who look in faith to God, we can know him not as a judge, but as a, ooh, <laughs> Not as judge, but as savior, redeemer, friend. And so that's my prayer for you. And that you might know him, not as the one who sends you into exile, but the one who brings you home through the work of Jesus Christ. And there's this phrase that he uses in, at, toward the end of chapter 39. He tells Israel, my face was against you, but now my face is towards you. It reminds you of the uh, blessing in number six. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you, right? For good, his blessings on you, to do you good. And you get to the very end of the Bible. The apostle John writes this beautiful book, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so much of the imagery comes from the book of Ezekiel. And in chapter 22, the Lord says, and they will see my face. Uh, 
I'll be their God and they'll be my people. Not exile, but brought back into the presence of God because of the work of Jesus Christ, that all who look to him in faith might be never cast out into exile, but brought in to see him face, his face, to be in his presence forevermore. And that we will know that he is the Lord, the true God. And that's my prayer for you, that you'll put your faith and your trust in him. You'll walk by faith. You'll have expectation. Your hope is that exile is not the last word, that you'll spend eternity with the Lord. Not that he will judge you, but that Jesus will take your punishment and that you'll walk by faith to see the face of God. How glorious that will be.